Well, I'm not a security expert and I don't have um, any inside knowledge of the Secret Service other than a few well-placed sources who say that morale is really bad at the Secret Service, um, that there are issues um, with the department, especially with the, the service, Secret Service agents and members of the organization who are not the closest to the president, the ones who are with him and who are around him are really good and, uh, and top-notch and they're aces at their jobs. But the other people, um, not all of them, there may be some issues with it. And not maybe some issues, there are some issues. We saw it playing out live on, on television or on the videotape. Right. When you see the, the man jumping the fence and going into the White House and getting all the way to the East Room, going past the entrance to the residence. So there has to be some top-down changes and some bottom-up changes as well. I think that um, overall, I don't know if it, the, the Secret Service has to be reorganized overall, but they've got a lot of soul searching to do and a, and a lot of um, changes need to be made. Okay, so I ask questions because that's my job, to ask questions. Do I ask provocative questions on purpose? Yes, because those, when you ask canned questions, you get canned answers. I was watching a documentary the other day in Los Angeles, and I was there to do my job to ask questions at an event. And I saw a documentary on Eleanor Roosevelt, who said she would pose provocative questions and provocative statements because she wanted to get people's attention. And she wanted people to think outside of the box and outside of their comfort zone. So do I do that on purpose? Absolutely. It is my question, to, it is my job to, to ask questions, uh, and I feel it's my job to ask provocative and interesting questions. So I will ask a question, do, especially what's going on in, in the world today, I will say, does Islam provoke violence, or provoke violence, or promote violence? And many people will think that I'm anti-Islam for asking that question. No, I want a real answer. And so that stirs, questions like that will stir things in people. And I don't want to ask a question like, what do you think make of what's happening with ISIS in the Islamic world? That is a boring question. So yes, I do it on purpose. It has nothing to do with retaining viewers. It has to do with teaching the audience, informing the audience, and engaging them. I consider myself a journalist. I do not consider myself an activist. I am a journalist who happens to be African American, who happens to be a man, who happens to be gay, and who happens to come from all three of those perspectives and more. So I have a point of view. And so my point of view, when I think it's necessary, I will tell you what that is. I don't do opinion journalism. I don't do, um, I do do editorials. Some people say, well, what are you doing? You know, you're a journalist, you're not supposed to do editorials. All journalists do editorials. Edward R. Murrow did, um, editorials. Walter Cronkite did editorials. So I, but I consider myself to be a journalist with a point of view. And if you're not answering my question, I'm going to challenge you to answer my question. And I'm also a journalist that does not care about what people think about me or say about me. No journalist should do that. You should want to, the person to answer your question and to inform the viewer. And that's what I do as a journalist. <laughs>